The human eye is a specialized type of structure that is capable of accepting outside stimuli in the form of photons of light. So basically our human eye takes the energy that is stored in the photons of light and it transforms that energy into electrical signals which eventually end up in a human brain and the human brain uses those electrical signals to create an image of our surroundings. So let's begin by looking at the diagram of our eye. So if we examine the eye from a side view and we take a cross section, we get the following diagram. So let's go through each one of these individual structures of the eye and discuss what their function is. And let's begin with the outside most portion of the eye known as the sclera. So the sclera begins here, it extends all the way around the eye and ends here. It's basically this inner white portion here. Now the sclera basically takes up the majority of the outside portion of our eye. It is not transparent and it's white. So when we look in the mirror, the white portion we see is our sclera. Now the sclera is composed of a protein known as collagen as well as elastic fiber. Fibers, and the sclera serves a protective purpose. It basically protects our eye from various forms of damage. Now the next portion we're going to discuss is the cornea. The cornea is the outside portion found in the front of the eye and unlike the sclera, the cornea is clear. It's transparent and that means it absorbs very little of the light and it allows most of the light to actually pass through. Now the cornea contains an index of refraction of about 1.4 which is much higher than the index of refraction of air. And because of this relatively large difference between the index of refraction of uh, the air and the cornea, most of the bending of light in the eye actually takes place on and inside our cornea. Now, the next portion I'd like to discuss is the choroid. Now, the choroid is basically the layer below the sclera. So, if the sclera is this white portion, the layer below that is our choroid. And the choroid actually contains the vascular portion of the eye, the portion that contains our connective tissue. So, the choroid is linked to our blood. And so, the blood that carries our nutrients and oxygen, the nutrients and oxygen are supplied to the eye via our choroid. Now, the next region is this anterior cavity. So, this anterior or frontal cavity of the eye contains a special type of fluid known as our aqueous humor. And the aqueous humor consists predominantly of water, but it also consists of a low concentration of proteins as well as other things. And the aqueous humor basically maintains the, pre uh, the pressure inside this region inside the eye. Now, the ciliary body, which is this portion here and this portion here, basically contains the ciliary processes, which actually synthesize and secrete our aqueous humor, the fluid known as aqueous humor. And they secrete that fluid through a canal known as the canal of Schlem. So we have this anterior cavity that contains our aqueous humor. That is a fluid that maintains that pressure inside this region of our eye. Now the next portion is our pupil. So the pupil is the opening of the eye. The pupil is the opening that actually allows light to pass through this region and into this large cavity that contains another type of gel-like fluid known as our vitreous humor. So what exactly is this pupil? So the pupil is this opening that can actually be controlled by special types of smooth muscles. So these smooth muscles are known as the iris. So when we look into the mirror, the iris is the colored portion of the eye while the sclera is the white portion of the eye. And the iris consists of two types of smooth muscles. We have circular smooth muscles and we have radial smooth muscles. And both types of smooth muscles are controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So let's discuss 
discuss how this control actually takes place. So let's suppose that we are inside a room that is dark. So we have very little light inside that room. So that means in order for us to actually see, we would want to open up the pupil so that more light goes inside our eye and that basically helps us see better. And that's exactly what happens when we enter a room that contains very little light. So the sympathetic nervous system of our autonomic nervous system, so our sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system innervates one type of smooth muscle inside the iris known as the radial smooth muscle. And when we are inside a dark room, so under very dark conditions, the sympathetic nervous system basically contracts the radial smooth muscle which dilates or opens up our pupil. So this iris basically contains the radial smooth muscle that contracts as a result of the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system and it opens up our pupil and by opening up our pupil that allows more light inside the eye and that allows us to see better in the dark. Now on the other hand if we are in a room that contains lots of light our parasympathetic nervous system that innervates the circularly muscle, the circular muscles of our iris basically contract the circular muscle and that actually decreases the size of the pupil, decreases the size of the opening and that allows less light inside our eye. Now the next portion that I want to discuss is the lens. So once the light hits our cornea it basically bends and it enters the lens through our pupil. Now, once it enters the lens, from physics we know that the lens is a convex lens. And a convex lens basically diverges the rays of light. So the lens of the eye is a convex lens that is used for fine tuning and focusing the light rays onto a special region at the back of the eye known as our retina. Now, just like the pupil can basically be controlled, the lens can also be controlled by a set of smooth muscles known as the ciliary muscles found inside our section shown here. Now, the ciliary muscles are controlled by the autonomic system. And basically by changing the shape of our lens, we're essentially changing the focal length of that lens and that allows us to focus our image onto our retina at the back of our eyes. So remember from physics we should know that because the lens is a convex lens that basically creates a real image found on the back of the eye on the retina and that image is upside down, it's inverted. So actually when the image is taken to the brain, the brain actually has to flip that image right side up and that's exactly why we see things the right way up, the right side up. Uh, now let's discuss our retina. So the retina is basically this portion in the back of the eye. And the retina contains specialized types of cells known as the rods and cones. Now rods and cones contain special photochemicals that are capable of detecting our light, absorbing the photons of light. And this photochemical is known as a pigment. Now, the rods contain a pigment known as rhodopsin. Now, the thing about rhodopsin is it can actually absorb all the wavelengths of visible light. And that means our, our, our rods cannot actually distinguish the different colors. On the other hand, we have three different types of cones and each one of these different types of cones contains its own unique pigment that can basically absorb its own unique frequency of light, its own unique wavelength of light. And so that means it's the cones and not the rods that are capable of distinguishing and producing the different colors that we actually see. Now, what exactly happens when the photons of light hit our rods and cones? 
Well, when the, photo when the photons of light actually hit these photochemicals no uh, known as our pigments, what basically happens is we have a conformational change taking place on the proteins inside the membrane of our cells. And that basically increases or decreases the permeability of ions such as sodium ions. So that can either depolarize or hyper hyperpolarize our cell membrane and that can ultimately create our electrical signal which will basically pass up to our brain through a nerve known as our optic nerve. So once the photons of light hit the rods and cones, this causes conformational change, so the change in our shape of the proteins found on the membranes of our cells, which leads to the production of an electrical signal that travels up to the brain via our optic nerve. So there are two types of cells that we have to be familiar with when we're talking about this transmission of electrical signals. So once the light actually hits the rods and cones, that light is transformed into electrical signal that basically ends up on a cell known as a bipolar cell. And the bipolar cell then passes down that signal to our retinal ganglion cells. And those retinal ganglion ganglion cells, their exons basically converge and meet and they form our optic nerve which basically goes all the way up to the brain. And inside the brain, those electrical signals are basically used to create an image that is right side up. Now, the last portion I'd like to talk about is something called the fovea. The fovea is basically a specialized, a localized region found on the retina and the fovea consists of predominantly cones. So we have a very high concentration of cones um, in the fovea compared to our rods. And that's exactly why on the fovea we have the sharpest image being formed. So the fovea is a part of the retina that forms the sharpest image because it contains a high concentration of cones compared to our rods.